Oxford University's physics department is one of the largest in the world. Over a hundred academics lead research spanning the breadth of physics. This research is comprised of six subgroups and other interdepartmental groups. So let's hear from them. I'm Sergio Martin, I'm one of the PhD students here in astrophysics. And astrophysics mainly consists of studying the entire universe as a whole and different celestial objects within it and pretty much all the big things that are inside it. How they evolve and what are the physical laws that govern them. Physics is fun because you can take maths and turn it into things that will explain the world. My name is Daniela Bortoletto and I'm a particle physicist. Particle physics is a, a really quite a big department here in Oxford and we have a variety of experiments which are located all over the world and we study the fundamental particles, the building blocks of matter. For example, we have experiments that study that are colliding uh, protons with protons at, at CERN, uh, but we have also experiments in, uh, um, in Japan and in the US that are studying neutrinos. And there is really a lot of neutrinos around you. In fact, if you consider this finger in my, in my hand, there are about 10 to the 11th neutrinos that are, are coming through in my, in my hand. So a lot of you are experienced with particles that are all around you, but you don't see them because they are um, very, 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 very tiny. I love physics because it's reasoning with previously unexplained reality and it's innovating and implementing positive new technologies into everyday lives. I'm Felix, I'm a professor here in the Rudolf Pyle Center for Theoretical Physics, and the idea of the center is to bring together theoretical physics from very different uh, areas. Uh, what we try to do is to use uh, mathematical techniques to actually explain nature, and these are then, the raw results are then going to be compared to experimental results. And usually theoretical physics gets separated from experimental physics because it, in some fields and in some cases it requires mathematical techniques that are quite advanced. And that's why it makes sense to have a theoretical physics department. In the sense that we, you know, we do very different fields of physics that range from particle physics that is high energy to, to condensed matter which refers to materials to soft matter that does fluids and things like that, or my case, in which I, I basically describe very hot matter for nuclear fusion, uh, all of these different fields with describe very different types of matter and very different types of, of physics, they have common ma mathematical techniques that we all use. I love physics because I'm so intrigued why materials behave the way they do. I'm Dr. Amir Hadi Girat and uh, I'm doing research in the condensed matter department. We work on condensed phases of matter, um, trying to understand the physical properties governing the materials aspects. We look into new materials for future applications. Perhaps one of the most obvious, given its name, mag magnetic levitation, uh, we had something pretty similar here. We had a superconductor floating over a track of magnets. Maglev trains exist, they run, you can go on them. Exciting ones are in Japan and Germany, where they're setting them to go really fast, like hundreds of miles an hour, because there's no friction. So there's no friction between the wheels and the track, because they don't have wheels. I mean, so they can just go as fast as they like, as fast as they can propel themselves forward. You know, One of the reasons I love physics so much is that the idea of the infrastructure is so volatile. Ages ago we thought that the universe was static and the equations were based on that fact. We now know that it is expanding and the idea that even to this day we could be wrong is absolutely amazing. So my name is Neil Bowles and we're in the sub-department of Atmospheric, Oceanic and Planetary Physics or AOPP. We're scientists who build instruments. So we work with our colleagues throughout the whole sub-department here, here in Atmospheric, Oceanic and Planetary Physics to ask particular science questions. Maybe interested in what effect a large volcanic eruption has when it dumps a load of aerosol, especially lots of small and fine particles of dust into the upper atmosphere. How does that affect the temperature balance of the Earth? Well, we can design and build instruments that will measure that specifically from, say, a small spacecraft or a small satellite. Then we can design and build things here that answer very specific science questions that our colleagues have got. Well, the reason I like physics is because it's the study of everything, from the study of the absolute microscopic, smallest things in the universe, to the greatest things, to black holes, 
to quantum physics. It's the thing around us. It's the science of everything. My name is Merrick Moore and I'm a graduate student in the Atomic and Laser Physics Department and I'm a professional ballet dancer. So here at the Atomic and Laser Physics Department, I we research the interaction of light and matter over an enormous range of conditions. So well, some people will work on like high energy plasmas created with like the most powerful lasers in the world, and then other people will work on coherent manipulation of like single quantum particles or creating these exotic states. I like physics because it allows me to understand uh, the world uh, more. And it's very interesting to be able to understand uh, how the world works. Hi, I'm Chris Wade. I'm working with uh, part of the um, government's uh, quantum technologies program. There are four hubs across the UK, and one of them, NKIT, um, is, is led here at Oxford. The goal, if you like, is to uh, try and construct a quantum computer. A quantum computer is a bit different from a, a normal computer. So a normal computer thinks about uh, zeros and ones and adds them up and subtracts them and does operations on them. But a quantum computer would be a bit different because it, uh, instead of having zero and one, it can deal with things that are in a, a, what we call a quantum superposition of zero and one. Um, so in some sense it's both zero and one at the same time, and in some sense it's, it's neither. Um, but by using the superposition we can hopefully calculate things uh, faster and more efficiently than we would be able to on a, a normal classical computer. <laughs>